Today, we are focusing again on acceptance and really diving in. So just to recap, acceptance is at the uh, tip of a pyramid. So a pyramid, acceptance is at the top. And unless we have some foundational skills, it's gonna be very, very hard to accept how you feel. It's just gonna be too intense and too overwhelming. But with your skills so far, including fullness, staying fueled with the right foods, noticing when you're hungry and taking care of yourself, the work we've been doing around uh, meeting your emotional needs and understanding your emotions and where you're feeling your emotions in your body, along with the growth mindset, journaling, and even a previous lesson ago, the work we've been doing around broadening our self-care skills and really starting to enjoy food. We've done a lot, a lot of work and we've also built up some other cognitive processes from speaking in a soft voice instead of beating ourselves up to reframing negative situations and being more objective to just ultimately sifting through our emotions and noticing these tendencies and pulls to now after we've just been sitting with the emotion that's where we've led up to right now we're just sitting and that includes those magnetic pulls you're just sitting there and you feel pulled to go eat because it's so uncomfortable to sit there and what we're doing is we're noticing oh my god i feel pulled and we're not we're not we're just sitting we've we've dedicated five minutes a day to just sit there and feel even those pulls oh man right and so this whole thing around acceptance is it's the uh it's the big kahuna earlier we said that unconditional eating was the scariest right and in our star wars heroes journey metaphor we said that unconditional eating was like darth vader it's very scary and it seems like the the worst evil the, the scariest thing but then you you get over that hump and you realize in star wars analogy there's darth sidious <laughs> there's an even greater real uh darkness or or challenge we need to overcome and that's that's where we're at on our hero's journey this thing about the ability to handle and accept these painful dark negative feelings without using food to cope that is the heart of this training program this right here is it and right now as you learn to just sit here we are realizing the transformative power of pure consciousness pure undiluted spirituality present soul you are being present with pain and that is a beautiful beautiful thing that's where healing comes from when you're able to look at these painful feelings and hold it with compassion and feel them and not run away that's where the true transformative power comes from and it's a big paradox because we let go of any expectation that when we go into those painful feelings they're going to transform so when we go into painful feelings, they don't necessarily transform right away. But we all know from experience that painful feelings do go away over time and that coping using with food, using food to cope with them just leads to more stress and more suffering. So we're doing the hard work and sitting here. Today we are increasing our pain tolerance even more. We're giving you more tools to increase your willingness to sit there with those hard feelings. Don't get me wrong. It's tough. You can be all on board. This whole acceptance, this whole hero's journey, this intuitive eating thing that we're on, you can, it can sound all great. But then in those moments of darkness, in those moments where shit hits the fan, it can, all these teachings can just go out the door. And that's when the power of acceptance comes in. You just, you don't have to think. You just got to sit down and feel. Nothing to do. And being there with it. Being there with the pain. And 
increasing our willingness today, we're going to be focusing on examining our values, discovering our values and virtues. So our values and virtues are defined as reasons to sit through the pain. The traditional example of a value or virtue is, let's say, a, a mother or an expecting mother, pregnant woman, and she's stressed out at work, and maybe her go-to is alcohol, right? But now because she's pregnant, she's willing to sit with the anxiety, and she's willing to experience the anxiety because she values the life that she is bringing into the world. She values something enough to experience discomfort. So a value is something that's so important to us that we're willing to sit with uncomfortable feelings. We have our why. And this is like how we really, really start to um, work with these negative feelings. You accept it, but it's not just like this blatant, this, this acceptance for no reason. It's accepting it because Food doesn't serve us in, 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 in growing our values. We're accepting these feelings because we have a bigger purpose. And so this whole conversation around values um, is a hugely important topic. And it can be a little bit vague. And that's part of the nature of values. Your values change over time. And everyone has different values. So these next few exercises are just designed to get you to think about your values and to help clarify what is important for you. What are you willing to sit through pain for? And to help you align your life in that direction. So the fundamental premise of the value is, is, is first realizing that a value is, um, is different than a goal. A value, for example, is, is kindness. And a goal would be volunteering at a, at a volunteering or something like that. So you have a goal to, let's say, be kind. But even if you don't go to the volunteering, you can still be kind to yourself. So a value is something that you can be even if the specific outcome, even if the goal is not quite met. So for example, you can be compassionate to yourself and have a goal to meet your needs without food. But if you do slip up, if you have a stressful day, if you, you know, if you, if one of your automatic triggers, if one of your automatic habits occurs and you do find yourself eating, you can still be compassionate if compassion is one of your values. So it's really, really important that we realize values are about the process and not about the outcome. But with that being said, the number one way we can assess our values and to start clarifying them is by flipping the script and having total honesty. This requires honesty and soul searching. But you think about, you create a list, you can just take out a piece of paper right now and you list like how do you base your self-esteem? What do you base your self-esteem on? Or another way of phrasing it, how do you determine your own success? Or how do you judge yourself? What, we're, what we want to be honest about is how we actually judge ourselves. Not this ideal, you know, oh, I would judge myself if I was um, compassionate. <laughs> you know, that's kind of... A, no, oftentimes we judge ourselves based on our weight, based on our appearance, based on how others like us. And we give a lot of thought to these. Now, of course, we also judge ourselves. You know, judgment, it, can, it, can, it swings both ways. It's a double-edged sword. We can judge ourselves in silly categories or, or categories that may not be as important. For example, uh, other people's opinions. We might judge our self-worth based on other people's opinions. But we might also judge our self-worth on other more valid criteria like friends, family, uh, being, being a contributing member of the community. So we want to list all of our values, all of the ways we judge ourselves, and just be honest. Like, take a look at how much you base your success or your self-esteem on these different things. 
a typical list in the beginning. Remember, this is the beginning. We're just getting out. We're just getting it out on paper. If we're being honest, we're we're gonna we're gonna judge ourselves on food, appearance, and eating more so than you should, and than than what's ideal. We'll get through the ideal in the next part. But what I want you to do is make a pie chart. Pie chart. So you make a list, and then there's a pie chart. So let's say you have 10 items that you judge yourself on. Well, if if you judge your self-esteem 33% based on relationship, your relationships, then 33%, a big hunk of the pie chart is going to be relationships. So just kind of do a rough estimation about how much you judge yourself on, on these different categories. And what, what a lot of people discover, if they're being honest, is that they currently judge their self-esteem, their success, yada, 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 a lot on appearance, a lot on weight, a lot on what others think. It, sometimes it's like 40%, 50% of the pie chart. It doesn't have to be you, but I just want you to be honest with yourself. How are you evaluating your success in life? How are you evaluating how well you're doing? Just be honest, create a list, create a pie chart. Because this honesty right here is really the key. It's not to beat yourself up. This is not to beat yourself up. If you, if you know if half your pie is based on food, appearance, and weight, it's not to beat yourself up. We just want to bring a compassionate awareness that, oh my God, I might be overvaluing, I might be overvaluing some areas of my life that just aren't that important, or by overvaluing certain areas, I'm undervaluing other areas. So the next part of this exercise is where you create another list, and this is where your ideals. Ideally, how would you like to evaluate your self-esteem? How would you like to f measure your success in terms of values? Um, and so you think about what's really what's really important to you and there's a list of like 12 different things perhaps it's relationships work spirituality community arts um social life intimate relationships if you're a parent or if you're married um there's play there's education and training there's spiritual growth so Oftentimes what people discover is that, wow, they are basing almost all of their self-esteem or a large chunk of it on food and weight and appearance, but they're not basing it on these other important things. And so the lesson, the, 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 the point of this exercise is to realize that um, when you overvalue something, you end up ruminating on it. You end up focusing on it obsessively. And it might not even be a valid way to think about your life in the first place. There are better ways to think about your life. Okay. So the other exercise is a tombstone meditation. So let's say you aren't quite sure what to value. How, what, what, is, what do values even mean? This is done in a lot of different books, um, like the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, it's a little exercise you don't have to do it if it uh, creeps you out or anything like that, but it's basically where you close your eyes and you imagine you feel in your heart, you're dead <laughs> and family, friends, coworkers, colleagues, they're at your funeral and they're saying stuff about you. And like, what do you want to be known for? How do they, how do you want to be remembered? So this exercise right here can help you uh, bring to mind some of your values, can help you cultivate what's really important to you. So it's kind of a discovery process. You imagine people saying, well, she was really kind and so forth, or you know, different things that people will say about you. Um, and then lastly, the, the final way is, is a worksheet down below where you uh there's the list of 12 things that i the 12 values that i just named and you just think about okay what how how important is this to me currently and how and upon reflection how much how much importance is it really worth to me 
So again, people might overvalue the food and realize they're, they're overvaluing it and they might then shift their, their ratings, their, their values to something that's a little bit more holistic, a little bit more real, realistic and, and just to assess, you know, where, where, how's your life? How well rounded is your life? So, um, that's our thing on values. The, the overall driving point is to be aware of these matters that are more important than the physical body, right? Our physical body is important, but it's not the end all. Our relationships are important. How we show up in community and our relationship to a higher source and uh, how we play and rest. And these are all things that we need to account for. And these can become your why. Why you are sitting with the pain, why you are sifting through the pain, why you are pr trying to practice self-care, why you are journaling, why you are doing this whole work, making it worthwhile. Okay, so that's it for the day. Peace.